Implicit differentiation works exactly the same for every problem. We take the derivative of both sides, and then we isolate the dy dx, which we got from the chain rule, where the derivative of y is dy dx. These can get a little more ugly looking if we're working on the product rule, though, with xy. When we see xy, we need to think about that as a product, x times y, where y is a function of x, whose derivative is dy dx. So for example, if we had x squared y minus y natural log of x equals x to the fourth y cubed plus x e to the 3y. Let's take this derivative following the same exact process that we followed with our previous problems, knowing that every product uses the product rule. So we've got this product x squared times y. The derivative of the first, x squared, is 2x times the second, which is y, plus the derivative of the second. The derivative of y is dy dx times the first, which is x squared. On the second term, y natural log of x is also a product. The derivative of y is dy dx keeping that negative there. And then we take the second natural log of x plus, but when we distribute the negative through, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over x times the first, which is y, equals we've got another product. The derivative of the first is 4x cubed times the second, which is y cubed. No derivative of y, so we keep going, plus now we take the derivative of the second, which is 3y squared. And since we took the derivative of y, the chain rule is going to give us a dy dx times the first, which is x to the fourth, plus another product. The derivative of x is 1 times the second, which is e to the 3y, plus the derivative of the second, which is e to the 3y times 3. But then the derivative of y is dy dx times the first. Again, after taking that derivative, our goal is to get all of these terms with dy dx together. So we're going to move them off to the left side. So I'm going to subtract 3x to the fourth y squared dy dx from both sides. And I'm going to subtract 3x e to the 3y dy dx from both sides. On the left side, there's two terms that do not have a dy dx on them. So we'll subtract 2xy, and we'll add y over x to both sides. So subtract 2xy, and we'll add y over x. So that goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. All that's left is there's an x squared dy dx. There's a negative natural log of x dy dx. There's a negative 3x to the fourth y squared dy dx. There's a negative 3x e to the 3y dy dx. On the right side, there's a 4x cubed y cubed. There's an e to the 3y. There's a negative 2xy. And there's a positive y over x. Just like our prior examples, though, we got all the dy dx's on one side. Now we can factor them out as a single dy dx, leaving behind x squared minus natural log of x minus 3x to the fourth y squared minus 3x e to the 3y. The right side's unchanged at 4x cubed y cubed plus e to the 3y minus 2xy plus y over x. Our goal is to get the dy dx alone. So we'll divide by that ugly factor of x squared minus natural log of x minus 3x to the fourth y squared minus 3x e to the 3y on both sides.
which means our derivative of y with respect to x taken implicitly is equal to this ugly fraction of 4x cubed y cubed plus e to the 3y minus 2xy plus y over x all over x squared minus the natural log of x minus 3x to the fourth y squared minus 3x e to the 3y. And while it got long and ugly, we were able to still find our derivative with respect to y using our product rule, using our chain rule, using the same steps. Derivative of both sides, get the dy dx on one side, everything else on the other side, factor out the dy dx, and solve by dividing. It's your turn to practice some of these on the assignment.